All right, so you guys ever look at something and go like, yo, something's obviously wrong, but I have no idea what it is. And then when you come back, the drawing looks even worse, but you still can't find what's wrong. I'm going to be solving that problem. And the solution to the problem has helped me to be able to draw poses from imagination without struggling too hard. And this only happened because I told myself, if I can't draw it in a box, I can't draw it at all. And as you may know, boxes has to do with 3D, but this isn't just going to be another perspective video. I'm going to be teaching you guys how to apply perspective to faces while explaining the parts of perspective that rarely gets talked about the stuff that gives you some gains and hopefully by the end of the video you have a better idea on how to draw anything from any angle so for starts i have two faces right here and one is clearly worse but for the worst one i tried to not make it look you know horrible it looks pretty decent but this person was trying to draw an angle where the camera was above them but they couldn't but when we slap a box over both of these we can see why the facial features on this one are following the lines of the box while on this face we can see that the facial features aren't following anything which is why it's drawn at a different angle but for this one like you see how the eyes sit on this line the hair the sides of the hair the mouth just everything follows this line and yeah that's part of the reason why boxes are so important to learn how to draw and if you can learn how to draw them you're much more likely to get the 3d part correct all right so next everyone knows that the face is split into thirds but personally i never gave the profile shot the respect it deserves and bro i rather have stage four aids than go back to not understanding the profile face correctly all right so any 3d angle is a combination of both the front and the profile face so we need good guidelines for both all right so right here i have a character sheet of makima and for starts i'm just gonna point out the simplest guidelines we can create so right here we can see that her hair strips almost touch her eyes in both profile and front and so this means that at every Every angle her hair strips will be locked in place literally every single angle and we can really create guidelines for everything like look at the eyebrows we can see that the eyebrows here align with the eyes while in profile there's a little bit of space in between and so as we get closer to profile that means the space should gradually widen but it will never pass this little tip of the nose here and guys you can find guidelines like this all over and what this does is it simply combines our knowledge of both the front and profile face and now i don't actually like consciously think of these guidelines anymore but if anything ever looks broken i just quickly think back to them and i'm easily able to find out what i did wrong and also i'm focusing on the face but this applies for the ribs the pelvis boob shoes a freaking turtle a cactus literally anything all right so the next thing i wanted to bring up is how to draw not boxes but cubes you ever just have like a hard time drawing the jaw chin and cheek area because bro i used to hate drawing it so much like it was always wonky and stuff it was always either too fat or just i had to race it a whole time tear a hole in my paper but yeah learning how to draw cubes is what solves problems like this since cubes cubes are perfect learning how to draw them helps your faces or anything else become closer to perfect so this is why i always wanted to learn how to draw a cube until eventually one day i went scrolling through a whole ass jungle to find out how to do it and gladly there was a resource made by kreds kush arts and this is actually something i left out of my 100 day series because i couldn't fit it in the video but basically drawing cubes is really easy all you need to do is draw a square and then you draw a cube inside and most importantly make sure to follow like the guidelines of the boxes as we can see these lines are at like specific marks that are easy to remember and this is basically an easy way to make sure your ratios are correct but yeah at the end of the day it's really just two steps a square and then a box inside of it all right so i showed you how to draw perfect cubes but there is one problem and it's that nothing is a perfect cube so how do we use it well there's three things i suggest doing number one just get used to drawing cubes again they don't have to be perfect just close and you really gotta get familiar to this ratio because again this is so important it's how you make sure you know how to place things like the draw correctly number two draw some perfect cubes but this time try to turn it into the size of a rib head or pelvis and you can either estimate it or find something that tells you the proportions of the main masses there's like box proportions you can find online and they honestly make things a whole lot easier like again i always had trouble placing the side of the head which would make me mess up on the jaw which would make me mess up on the whole face and for boxes there's no guessing where the side is and having like calculations is so good for people that fuck up shit like i do and the third thing i used to use the box for is i would make the cube exactly the size of the head or the torso and then i'd use a 3d model as a reference and since i was using such a perfect box that means that it had the possibility of being quote unquote perfect which means that any imperfections were easier to point out and this is kind of why when searching on how to draw a perfect cube in the first place because if you draw something with a perfect cube and still mess up it becomes very clear that there is something that you don't understand and you really can't run away from that fact now whenever you draw a box it doesn't have to be a cube but again the main reason why we need to practice cubes is so that we're at least 
least aware of this ratio. And last thing, whenever you're drawing a cube or box, it doesn't have to be, you know, rule or perfect. Just make it decent. All right, so right here is one of my favorite references. And I can't read Japanese, but what it's saying is, number one, you know, it's okay. It looks pretty decent. But number two looks better because they cut off the size of the face. And then for number three, they remembered that the face bends. And we can see that the eyes and eyebrows follow this bend of the face. So if you want to use this, step three is what you should follow. And then you can just like split the face into thirds per usual. I think something to point out here is make sure there's a separation between the brow bone and the cheek because if it isn't the jaw that's incorrect then it's gonna be the cheek or brow bone and actually i wasn't gonna show you guys me doing this but i thought i might as well just do it really quickly here's one that's already finished and for this next one i basically you know started with the square drew a box inside of it and then i started filling in the 3d shapes of the face i'll be going over more on the 3d shapes later but as you can see using the box is very similar to using the loomis method and then for this last one i wanted to draw something that wasn't a sketch and i just picked this hard ultra hard angle and this is like a really cool angles this is like a jojo angle but yeah anyone that can draw any angle knows how it works inside of a box now as you can see here i'm like making sure that the face is bent the eyebrows bent to the face as well and then the hair is falling like the curvature of the head also you can see that like the second eye just completely cannot be seen at this angle oh also some things are just really weird at this angle like i tried to draw a tongue but it looked more like an airhead and i think it's because of the perspective and i was like eh, i'll leave it out but yeah as you can see as long as you know how to draw like a perfect cube and you know very very basic perspective the only real challenge is learning all the freaking shapes of the face and that's what i'm gonna be going over next all right so if you're like me i've watched like countless art videos all the time in all the videos most people teach the front the side and the three-quarter view but if you think about it only one of those angles is in 3d and the three-quarter angle honestly doesn't even really feel 3d and that's why i believe if you know perspective as soon as you're able to draw the two default angles immediately jump to the harder angles which sounds crazy but since no one can really draw these angles without understanding 3d really well it makes these angles really good practice these angles kind of force you into learning 3d correctly and until you learn 3d correctly a lot of the stuff you learn can easily be forgotten for me personally when i started learning 3d correctly now i realized that everything i thought was correct was wrong damn nearly all of it but this actually made me think of something great to point out in the past i was able to draw every angle on this sheet but it wasn't actually because of my understanding of 3d it was just mainly because i practiced it a bunch but what used to happen was without fail i would learn how to draw something i'd have it down down but then a week later i would <laughs> i would not be able to draw it anywhere near as good you know <laughs> so basically in a way you want to learn 3d so that you don't forget the stuff you learn that's why you want to make sure you're applying 3d correctly and then drawing hard angles forces you to learn 3d correctly but all right how do i suggest practicing unique angles because bro they're they're terrifying they are scary so for starts we all know that the head is either a ball or a cranium we know that there's like a jaw triangle thing and then there's a nose but there's a lot more pieces to the face learning the pieces of the face is by far the most important part of learning how to draw characters from any angle and that's what we're about to be focusing on all right so we're going to be studying the eye and we're going to be studying these four angles i don't really agree with just learning one angle at a time because you wouldn't really just teach a kid left without teaching them right like if you just taught a kid left without right then they wouldn't even understand what left really means so instead of focusing on one angle we're gonna focus on these four main angles because an angle like this is just a combination of these angles anyways all right first starts you see how the highest tip of his eyes are like near the edge while if you look at the front shot the highest tip is near the middle so for an angle like this when you draw the highest points of the eyelid it should be somewhere in between the way it looks here should be moving closer to the way it looks here okay that's one thing down so now when we look at the eyes from above we can see that the point i was calling the highest point is no longer the highest point and so you remember how each angle is important well if the answer isn't here it's definitely on another angle so if we look at this angle we can clearly see that the face is slightly bent and so what that means is even though it doesn't look like it at this angle the face is bent here as well so now since the face is being bent we now know why the corner of the eye is higher than it normally is the eye is gonna fall the bend of the face but also i want to point out the effect the bent face has on the eyes at this angle and you know how in front view the corner of the eye is pretty aligned with this part well, if we go to this low camera angle, we can see that it follows the bent face just like the high camera angle did. Okay, that's two things learned. Okay, so now let's go back to the high camera angle. We can see that the top of the eyelids are really covering the eyeball. And normally we feel like we'd see the reverse in the low camera shot. But actually in this shot, we can see that the lower eyelids don't really cover the eyeball the same way that the top eyelids do in the high camera shot. But why is this? Well, yet again, if you don't understand something at the angle you're focusing on, which is normal, it 100% can be explained 
by another angle. And so now that we're looking at the profile shot, we can see that the bottom eyelid is already lined with the eyeball. So it's not like it's going to overlap it. Actually, I've never actually looked at the eye like this. It actually just does not overlap it ever. And also we can clearly see that the top eyelid overlaps the eyeball so that the eyeball doesn't roll out or something. I don't know. All right. So now that we've looked at this angle, it just makes sense that the top eyelid covers the eyeball a lot more when compared to this angle. And boom, we are finally done studying the eye. That is about everything. And this may seem like overkill. You mean be like, God dang, that's so much work you just did. But with the way I just studied it, since we went over the main angles, we now have like a really good understanding of how to draw the eye at any angle. And now I'm going to show you guys how easy it is to apply the stuff we just learned. At this angle, I remember that the top eyelids really overlap the eyes. While if you look at the bottom eyelids, you can see that it's like really round. So what we draw here is going to be really round. Also already took into account that this point right here is trying to get closer to the profile version. As you can see for Nobara's eyes, for both front and profile, the high point is near the corner. So it's really not going to move at all. And lastly, we have to show that the face is bent. And I did this by making sure that this corner of the eye is a little bit higher than it normally is. And then I just repeat everything I said for the next eye. And boom, boom, everything has been applied. Filling in the iris and then the eyelashes are really easy afterwards since we got the casing down. And you can see like everything we looked over earlier was used right there and can be used to draw every single angle like I'm going to do another. So for this angle, if we think back to this angle, we'd remember that the eyelids don't like suck on the eyeball as much. So what we're going to draw is going to be rounder than normal. Now next, the highest tip should be a combination of both of these. So somewhere near the middle or again for the character I'm drawing, it doesn't even really move. And as you can see, I already took that into account. And lastly, the face is bent. So the corner is going to be lower than normal. Now for this eye, the tip should be closer towards the middle because again, it is trying to become the profile version of Nobara's eyes. And again, for the bottom, we just take into account that the face is bent and boom, boom, it's finished. We drew the eyes. And as you can see, I didn't need to like study every single angle to know what I was doing. All the information I learned from the main angles was all I needed. And some of this may have seemed complicated, but hey, you did just follow along with one of the most complex pieces of anatomy, or at least you followed along with some of it. No piece is harder than the eyes. And so if you want to practice this, it can be done with four steps. Step one, find the four main angles of whatever you want to learn. And for the eyes, there's four angles, but sometimes it could be five angles. For example, the rib has the front, the profile, the low and high camera, and it has the back, whereas the eyes doesn't have the back. But yeah, all you need to do is just take a screenshot of each angle and you're chilling. It could be the nose, the mouth, the jaw, boobs, shoulders, anything. Step two, pick a corner spot or a center spot and just look at how it adjusts at every main angle. There are also like stuff you can find online to help you easily remember these parts of the face. And thirdly, try to draw a unique angle. And since we studied the main angles, we now know that whatever we're drawing should be a combination of the main angles. Now, lastly, probably the most important step, and it's just to be aware that the box exists. And you can either draw a box, you can draw a perfect cube, you can simply just imagine the box, or you can draw the box at the end to check your work. Any method works, you just have to be aware it exists. All right, so as I kind of showed, it's not that hard to break stuff down, but how do we make it even easier? And while there's like a lot of good resources out there, there's the sorrow head, of course, Michael Hampton's figure drawing book, Anatomy for Sculptors is really good. Warning, it comes with free nudes. But my favorite is definitely Manga Materials English Patreon because they break down complicated parts of the anatomy into like really simple steps. When you think of it as these easy steps, it loses its scariness. But yeah, overall, your goal should be to find like breakdowns of anatomy. All right, but my second favorite though isn't really just one thing. It's just 3D models in general. I love 3D models. I would have long chopped off my hands without them. It just, there's something different about seeing it in real time. It just feels more 3D. But all right, let's look at these lips for a bit. Not the bottom lip, but the top lip. And just look at how the top lip gets hidden and how in vice versa, at this angle, the top lip gets bigger. And it's because we can start to see the underneath. This is basically all the stuff I look at when I'm trying to understand these unique angles. Now, real quick, which one should you use? Anime or the star head? My suggestion is to use a star head while drawing in whatever style you want. Firstly, I started with the anime one and it taught me super well, but I did eventually have to come back to the star head because there's some stuff you can't see on the anime one. And actually, the star head is easier to understand if you don't let it overwhelm you. Honestly, as long as you're drawing unique angles, you're on the right track since it helps you think in perspective better. All right, guys, I'm going to be showing you the proportions of the front face. And then when I get to drawing the face, I'll show you how to eliminate same face syndrome. And this is coming from somebody that only draws the same faces. Also, I feel like this is a good point in the video to insert the classic YouTuber call to action. If you don't check out the link in the description right now, the Easter bunny will come kiss you while you're sleeping. This is not a troll. All right, so here are the proportions I use. Basically the anime version of the Loomis method. And then right here is the face that I normally always draw. I make sure the eyebrows are touching this top line here. And then I'm making sure that the eyes are 
sitting on top of the half line here. And then as always, the nose sits on the one third and then the lips are at the third of the face. And this is basically Chainsaw Man and Jujutsu Kaisen proportions. Now for same face syndrome, it's basically solved by knowing perspective and then altering it to one of these shapes here. And it was pretty easy. And what I've drawn right now looks very samey because they all had the same hairstyle and eyes. But yeah, over here, basically what we got here is bigger eyes and they align at the halfway point. That's how you like kind of like make someone look younger. And then I dropped the jaw down and we got this kind of like diamond shape. And then for this face is basically what I'd normally do, just a different eye shape. Now over here, I tried to draw like a more curvier face, more plumpy. That's the only thing that's different here. And then for this last one, I just wanted to make sure that you guys knew where the head was in case you're trying to give somebody a buzz cut. I also thought I should mention that the nose changes like the ethnicity of the face more than anything else. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all nine tips into action. And I've been brainstorming on how to explain this for literally hours because I went over a lot. But the idea I landed on was to give you guys an explanation on every single line I placed down while drawing the face. It'll probably surprise you just how in depth we can go for just a single line. And by the end, you're going to see why it takes only two to three misplaced lines to ruin your whole entire drawing. All right. So for starts, I made sure to pick like a decently hard angle, not the hardest, but it at least requires perspective. And so basically what I got here is the Loomis method, but with the box on it. And it isn't a perfect cube. It was just a box that was freehanded. It doesn't need to be perfect. All right, so right now I'm starting out by drawing the eyes. I'm not gonna go over since it since I already did in depth. Something I do point out here is that it's following the lines of the box. All right, so right now I've drawn the nose. And at this angle, the nose is actually gonna overlap the eyes just a tiny bit. And we're gonna see the underneath. Also, I normally start with like the eyelashes because I think the face looks really weird without eyelashes. And if anyone's curious, I normally just make the big chunky ones. And then I add the little skinny strands as well. And they're just single lines. All right, so right here, I draw the brow bone slash cheekbone area. You can see it's not going straight down following the box. It's a little slanted. And that's because the face tapers. You can actually see that the cheekbone normally is the farthest out. But when you turn it, the brow bone becomes the furthest out. While the cheekbone is in a little bit more. Which is way more noticeable for anime faces. And so this dot right here is the cheekbone coming in a little bit. All right, so right now, I'm about to draw the jaw. And so what happens is the jaw actually falls back in 3D space. For human faces, it's normally almost straight down but for anime faces it's normally a bit slanted and then for the little chibi faces it's very slanted but yeah what's going on here 3d wise is for this face the jaw is slanted so in 3d space this should happen as well and so i'm gonna connect the jaw to the chin following that little red dot and there we go all right so next i'm getting ready to draw the jaw and as we all know the jaw connects to this point right here and right here we can see i'm showing you where the jaw would actually end so the ear is gonna end up at that point and then this part of the jaw is basically invisible and right now i'm drawing the head which is pretty self-explanatory but however i do want to point out how at this angle this piece goes missing right whereas if we look at it from the top down this piece becomes very prominent is because when you draw it at this angle the forehead is going to look really round while at this angle it's not going to be round you see how like it's much straighter than what we're actually drawing right now imagine if you tried to make this angle not round right it would basically break and fyi this is only one mistake imagine if it was two three or you know ten and i'd even mention this just to show the forehead i mentioned it because again it's easier to remember things in pairs and you wouldn't teach yourself left without teaching yourself right all right so right now i just show you that the head goes behind the ear we can actually see it at this angle you can also see it on the sorrow head you see how the big old ball is poking the little tip out wait what all right so here i kind of showed this earlier how the neck doesn't pass the ear here it should be always in closer towards the center of the face unless we got a big old batman neck and here i show you that you know the eyebrows and eyes are not going to be lined up again something we saw with the Maka machine. And right here, I draw the iris. Honestly, the iris, you just gotta practice. That joint deserves a whole video. Actually, I can show you a 3D model though. You can just see that the far iris is an oval while this is a circle. And that's because of something in perspective called foreshortening. As you can see, it's noticeably smaller. And right here at this point, you're gonna see that I've made one tiny mistake. You might not even see it, but I'm gonna reveal it later. All right, so right here, I show that the mouth is at the one third, not the lips, but the opening of the mouth. Right here, I just again show you the most important part that the face is following this body. Box. You know how the nose and ears set on the same line? That should also happen in perspective. And it doesn't have to be perfect, but again, it should be like decently close. Here I draw the lips, and as I said earlier, the top lips end up becoming bigger, or I should say appears bigger, since we can now see the underneath. And right here, I just basically show you what the face looks like without the guidelines in the background. Also, right here, I point out that you probably 
can see like the underneath of the chin here. Normally I avoid adding it, but I'm just gonna add it because it's more atomically correct. I do try to make it like as least noticeable as possible though. And then we head to the hair. Again, there's always like a little bit of space in between the hair and the head. But as you can see at this specific spot, I don't give it enough room. So it's gonna look like it's glued to the head. And what you're gonna see is I eventually add some more hair back there. All right, so right here, I'm making sure that the hair follows the box lines and we can use actually the eyebrows as a guideline. All right, so I'm making sure that that the hair is again following the box it's staying inside and we can see i was a little bit off but it still should be fine except the back hair though definitely needs to be way lower and as i draw it it actually gets covered by the shoulders all right so right here i continue working on the hair and then i show you basically one is adhering to the shape of the head while this one is doing its own thing and right here we could see Something's wrong. Something's wrong because I'm flipping it over. And basically, the eye has been a little bit too low the whole time. Here's the before and after. And you may be like, yo, that's such a little mistake. And I agree. However, in a little bit, I'm going to show you just how that little mistake could have ruined the entire face. All right, so right here, I'm adding some hair strands, some line weight, just to pretty it up a little bit. And something I do for the line weight is I make the brush 1.5 bigger than what it was at first. Just because it's easy to like go overboard with the line weight. I like to have like a good measurement of what I should do added some shadow in the back of the hair and then right here i just add you know just a little bit of shine also i noticed that our nostril was a bit misplaced like lines should never be parallel like that it just looks really weird all right so right here i changed the expression to basically show you the teeth on the inside and we can see that even for the teeth i am showing the perspective you don't have to do this but i'm showing that the front teeth or in front of the back teeth. That's why I added this one little line here. And there we go. The face is finished. However, I really wanted to know where did I go wrong when placing the eyes? And what I actually realized was the eyes were placed correctly. It was the eyebrows that I drew incorrectly. And if you remember, I used the eyebrows to also line up the hair bangs. And since it was two against one, that's why the eye was the one that felt wrong. So basically this face I drew here wasn't even following the lines of the box. And in this whole video, I've mentioned the lines of the box at least 20 times so if it was so important why didn't i end up messing up well if you look at my face right here you can see that the face is straight up like there is no tilt there is no nothing but the face i intended to draw at the beginning was tilted and so now if we take the box and untilt it we can see that it is following the guidelines i used for the final face i drew so that one misplaced eyebrow changed the whole course of what i was doing it basically untilted the face but imagine if it wasn't just one piece or if i didn't actually know how to fix it that's why understanding boxes and then 3d anatomy pieces is important however to top it all i can actually show you what would happen if i did change the lines of the face and so right here i'm just gathering the bangs i'm gathering the eyes and eyebrows and i'm gonna make it what it was supposed to be a tilted face and then i make sure to do the same for the mouth as well because again every piece and i'm sure you can already start to see that this face is now tilted and all of this is just an example of how one misplaced changed the entire angle I was drawing. Like again, imagine if it was multiple little mistakes. If I didn't know the 3D pieces, I wouldn't even have been able to fix it. All right, guys, I made sure to timestamp the whole video. I better see some games. But yeah, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. Make sure to check out my Twitter. I'll be posting sneak peeks on there. I also see every time you guys tag me. But yeah, thanks for watching and peace. Have a good day.